Welcome back to the Getting Started with OpenScope MZ video series. I'm Sam Kristoff from Digilent, and in this video, I'll unbox a new OpenScope MZ and walk you through the process of setting up the hardware and the software. Let's jump in and start opening up the OpenScope MZ. This is a, a new OpenScope that you'd get from, from Digilent. And if we open up the packaging, so we have some protective foam. This is the Flywire connector, the 30 pin connector that uh, gives you easy access to all the IO signals on the open scope. A little bit more packaging. And then here you can see the open scope itself in protective foam. Remove that. And now you can see here is the open scope. Here's the top of the board. Uh, we have the Wi Fi radio here the PIC MZ microcontroller that does all the heavy lifting on the OpenScope MZ. This is our 30 pin connector, uh, program and reset buttons, and some of the analog front end here. Uh, on the back, you can see we have uh, gummy feet so that it doesn't scrape on your desk, and an SD card connector. The SD card is optional. You can uh, add it if you want, but you certainly don't need it to use the OpenScope. So first thing I'll do is connect the fly wires. Just pull these out of the plastic bag. And you'll notice that uh, one end of this fly wire connector has a notch in it. That should go up when you connect it to the open scope. So I'll go ahead and insert it. It takes just a little bit of force. Make sure that you get it to connect all the way down into the pins. All right, now that that is done, the only other thing you need is a USB micro uh, cable. So I have one here. Uh, that is not included with the open scope, so make sure you have one of those on hand. And I'll plug that into the open scope there. And uh, you can see the other end was already plugged in by PC. And uh, my computer recognized that I connected a new device. And the first time you do that, it'll take just a couple minutes to install drivers for the FTDI chip on there. Um, it should do that all automatically. And uh, while it does that, let's go get the Digilent Agent. So the Digilent Agent is a service that runs in the system tray and uh, it kind of acts as a bridge between a Waveforms Live and the OpenScope. Um, and it gives you some additional features like uh, the ability to upload firmware onto the OpenScope. And uh, it's a little bit faster than Wi-Fi in general. Uh, you don't need the Digilent Agent once you have everything set up, but off the bat, we recommend that you definitely start with the Digilent Agent. Uh, if nothing else, it lets you configure the Wi-Fi on the open scope so you can get it on your network and then connect to it over Wi-Fi after that. So to get the Digilent Agent, I'm going to launch a web browser. Then I'm going to browse to reference.digilentinc.com. And then under software, I'll choose Digilent Agent. And then on the right side of the screen, you can see builds for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Um, there's also links to the source code and more information about the protocol. For now though, I will just download the Windows version. Once that's done downloading, I'll just double click to install it. And I'll choose to run it. Next. And the default path is all right, so I'll click next. And this will show you the two components that it's going to install. Uh, the first is the Digilent Agent, and the next is Waveforms Live offline support. So even if you don't have internet access, internet access you can still uh, launch and use Waveforms Live. So I'll install both components and hit Next, and accept the agreements, and hit Install. It'll take just a second to install a few components. All right, and then run the digital agent now is checked and I'll leave that because I want it to start up and then I'll hit finish. Now that the digital agent is installed and running, uh, if I expand my system tray, I can see a little green gear icon with a D in it. Uh, that is the digital agent. And if I right click it, I can check for updates. I can see uh, the current version number. I'm at 1.0.0. Uh, if I was connected to an open scope device, I would see that here and I could uh, release the connection um, and I can launch waveforms live. If you have an internet connection, this will launch uh, waveformslive.com in your default browser. And if you don't have an internet connection, it will launch a local version of waveforms live. So you can still uh, use waveforms live even without, without an internet connection. So I'll go ahead and click that 
and it will launch waveformslive.com in my default browser. And then let's go ahead and uh, add a device. You can see I don't have any devices here yet. So I'll click add a device and I have three options. Uh, I can choose a network device if I want to add a device by IP address. But since my OpenScope is new out of the box, it's not on my Wi-Fi network yet. So uh, I can't add it as a network device just yet. Um, I could add a simulated device and this is a purely software device um, which just runs in the browser and kind of lets you play around with features of Waveforms Live uh, without even having hardware. And the last is the agent. So what we're going to do is add the agent and then Waveforms Live will connect to the OpenScope through the agent. So I'll choose add agent and by default it will be localhost and port 42135 and uh, that is almost always the correct way to connect to the agent. Um, you could potentially change this but usually the defaults are fine. So I'll click the plus button to add the agent and when it does you'll see that I can choose uh, different COM ports on my PC and COM3 is the only one that I have and that's my open scope and I will click open to connect to the device and you can see it says device added successfully. Uh, we'll cover some of this other stuff in one of the next videos. So I'll just click done. And now you can see I have an open scope successfully added to Waveforms Live.